Then on Sports Central, we go for our next team prediction of this offseason, and this could be over the Michigan State Spartans. You know, a team that went 5-7 and seven overall in the 2022 season. Bit of a drop-off in comparison to where this team was in 2021, but this is a team that does show potential looking forward to 2023. How will this team be in 2023? And will this team return to contention this upcoming season? We'll be talking about it here today. We'll be analyzing this team and break their schedule game by game in this video. Well, let's get started with a quick recap of 2022. Once again, the record was 5-7. and seven. Kind of a bumpy start to the season for this team. Of course, coming off of an incredible 2021 season the expectations were definitely higher for this team so that definitely makes five and seven look a bit more disappointing but i mean this wasn't a bad team last season they beat western michigan week one 35 to 13 took care of acker no problem 52 to nothing and then went to seattle take on washington took a loss here 39 to 28 but washington turned out to be a great team last year and honestly uh, they could be even better in 2023. I really would not be surprised. And uh, you do take on the Huskies once again this season. This time you got them at home. Uh, so you got a chance for a really nice win there against a solid Washington team. But uh, this was a disappointing loss here last season. And then he took on Minnesota. This was one of those confusing losses. Lost to Minnesota 34-7 to at home. Uh, which last season this team did take a couple of confusing losses. That Minnesota one was definitely one of them. Uh, then he lost to Maryland on the road by a couple of touchdowns, lost to Ohio State 49 to 28. And then he came back, he beat Wisconsin 34 to 28 in double overtime. So uh, that was a nice win there against Wisconsin, a team that uh, wasn't quite as good as they usually are, but still a nice win. Uh, so they were starting out the season three and four, which many expect Michigan State to at least be a five win team heading into the bye week. Uh, so it was a bit disappointing to that point, but came back. Uh, after the bye, took on Michigan, lost this game 29-7. Michigan, just an incredible team last year. Uh, beat Illinois on the road. This was an impressive win here. Taking on a very tough Illini team that turned out to be really good last year. And they beat them 23-15. So that was definitely one of the better wins of the season. Uh, beat Rutgers 27-21. Lost to Indiana in double overtime. This was another one of those confusing losses. Uh, lost to the Hoosiers by 8 there in double overtime. So... Uh, definitely another disappointing one. And then they lost to Penn State 35-16. to The final record was 5-7. and But looking forward to 2023 now. Your Ross preview heading into the season. This team is going to look a bit different, especially on offense. Peyton Thorne has transferred out. He is headed to Auburn. So it's now up to either Noah Kim or Kitten Hauser to uh, take over at the quarterback position. There is definitely a quarterback battle uh, for this team. You also got Sam uh, Levette in there who is expected to... Uh, being contention to start so we really haven't heard of any of these guys mainly because they really they don't have much experience uh, but i will say this i mean noah kim was the primary backup behind Peyton thorn last season so i would expect noah kim to probably be the favorite to at least start at the beginning of the season we'll see if that changes but i'll say this too i mean we really don't know much about these michigan state quarterbacks but I mean, Peyton Thorne, when he first came in, no one really expected him to be super good. And that was way back in uh, 2020. I mean, in 2020, he played a bit. His first real season was in 2021. And I mean, he really didn't have super high expectations, but he turned out to be a great quarterback in 2021. 2022 also was great. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, I do have optimism for this quarterback situation. I think you'll be okay, uh, whether that's Noah Kim or Hauser or whoever it is going to be in the quarterback position. Uh, as far as the backfield is concerned, Jalen Berger's coming back, who was pretty good last year. Uh, not quite on the same level as uh, Kenneth Walker III, who was incredible in 2021. I do think that was significant losing him. I mean, this offense just was not the same in 2022. But Jalen Berger is a good back. He put up over 800 yards. Uh, six touchdowns last season. We'll see if he can progress. Looking forward to 2023. You do lose your second and third running backs, though. Elijah Collins and Jarek Broussard. Both of them are gone, uh, but at least it's good. You still got Jalen Berger coming back. Uh, the receiving core, you lose Keon Coleman, Jaden Reed. Both of them are gone, which is a bit concerning. Uh, you're going to have a bit of a more inexperienced receiving core. Looking forward to 2023. Uh, Keon Coleman over or nearly 800 yards last season, seven touchdowns. And Jaden Reed, not far behind, 650 yards or so, five touchdowns. Uh, so both of them are gone but at least you got trey mosley coming back uh, last season he put up over 350 yards uh, malik Carr is also coming back your top tight end he was fourth in the receiving core last season so uh, 
the receiving core not terrible the backfield will be okay the quarterback situation a little bit questionable just because we haven't really seen any of the quarterbacks too much but i do have optimism for this offense you lose one on the o-line one on the d-line three in the secondary so defensively there's a lot of potential here the linebacking situation honestly looks pretty great i mean there's a lot of potential defensively for this team i do think this team will step up defensively it's just the offense that's going to be a bit questionable if this offense can play well I mean, this could be a really sold team next season because I'm pretty confident the defense will progress. There's plenty more experience defensively than there was in 2022. So yeah, that is definitely a bright sign looking forward to the future. But your transfer portal and recruiting now. So Peyton Thorne mentioned him, obviously, off to Auburn. Uh, Hampton Fay is in the transfer portal as well. Quarterback who uh, really didn't have much of a chance of starting anyway, so that's okay. Uh, Nathan Carter, running back, he is coming in from UConn. You also got Jaron Mangum coming in. Uh, from South Florida. So honestly, this backfield, you do have some potential there with Carter and Mangum. They expect them to kind of take over the roles of Elijah Collins and Jarek Broussard uh, as they're both listed as running back two and three on this team. Honestly, for all we know, if one of them could step ahead of even Jalen Berger, that'd be a really good thing for this offense if we could see that once again. Uh, Keon Coleman, receiver, he is off to Florida State. Jeremy Bernard is off to Washington. He bring in Elante Brown, receiver from Nebraska. He's listed as a wide receiver, too. I uh, could get some playing time. Then, of course, you uh, bring in Tennille Hopper, tight end from Boise State. Uh, he's listed right behind Malik Carr on the depth chart. Uh, Jalen Franklin, tight end, is coming in from Wisconsin as well. Uh, Tunemize Adelai, defensive lineman, is coming in from Texas A&M. Expect him to have immediate impact. Uh, Deshaun Mallory, defensive lineman, is off to Arizona State. Jalen Hunt's off to Houston. Uh, Dre Butler, you got him coming in. Uh, he is a defensive lineman from Liberty. Michael Fletcher, edge rusher, is off to App State. And then you bring in uh, Samar Melvin. Expect him to have immediate impact as well. Uh, coming in from Wisconsin. Recruiting-wise, this team is actually looking really great. 23rd in the country, 4th in the Big Ten. You've got a top four recruiting class in the conference. Looking forward to 2023, which is uh, definitely a bright sign for the future. you got nine four-stars coming in, seven three-stars, and I've got you guys at an 8 out of 10 on the future forecast meter. I mean, I still think the future is very bright for this team. I know 2022 was a bit of a disappointment. I mean, yeah, there's no hiding that there. I mean, this is a team that going 11-2 in 2021 uh, with second-year head coach Mel Tucker. It made sense for uh, him to be extended and for Michigan State to have a lot of uh, a lot of excitement for the future. And I still think the future is very bright for this team. It's just 2022 was a bit disappointing. And now looking forward to 2023, there's some inexperience once again. But I think this team has still got a lot of great years ahead. I mean, Michigan and Ohio State are still going to run the conference in 2023. I don't see that changing really uh, for sure in 2023. It's still going to be that way. But I mean, for the future, this team definitely has got the potential and definitely the recruiting and everything to uh, to definitely make an impact in the future. So I still like where this team is headed. Looking forward to 2023. But with that, let's take a look at the schedules we look forward to 2023. So you got Central Michigan Week 1, Richmond Week 2. Uh, two pretty easy games to start up the season. Then Washington comes to town. This is a huge game in Week 3. You lost to them last season in Seattle. You got them coming to town this season. And Washington is a really solid team looking forward to 2023. Uh, they've got a familiar quarterback as well, Michael Penix, who had an incredible season in 2022, uh, formerly an Indiana player, the Indiana quarterback. So that's definitely a, uh, a storyline to keep in mind as well. And then you got Maryland at home. So you're at home for your first four games. Then you go to Iowa and then to Rutgers. And then you come back, play Michigan at home. That's going to be a tough one. And then Minnesota on the road, Nebraska at home to start out November, Ohio State on the road, Indiana on the road, and then Penn State at home. Or actually, no, that's going to be at Ford Field now. The location for that game has changed. It looks like that's going to be a night game there on Black Friday in Detroit at Ford Field. So, I mean, it's definitely a difficult schedule at times. There's no hiding that, and it also doesn't help that uh, Washington could be a top 15 team next season. you got them at home, but uh, still a difficult matchup. But looking at September here, Central Michigan, Richmond, both easy wins. You take care of them, no problem. You should start the season 2-0 uh, without any issues, I would imagine. And then Washington, this is going to be a tough matchup here. This is going to be a big test for this team, uh, taking on a, a Washington team that I could see being a potential dark horse national contender in 2023. I mean, the Pac-12 is filled with excellent teams. And Michael Penix in Washington, that offense is going to be incredible in 2023. The defense, if the defense can be good, 
That is really a team to keep an eye on. Uh, but offensively, they're going to be brutal. I do think they beat Michigan State, even though the Spartans do have the potential to win that matchup, especially with this defense. I'm expecting it to improve, but I do want to mark you down for a loss there. I just think Washington is too solid of a team. And the inexperience offensively does come back to bite a bit there for the Spartans. But you come back, you beat Maryland. This would be an excellent win here. Uh, Maryland next season, I could see eight to nine wins or so. That's going to be a solid team. So you get a nice win against Maryland uh, there in late September. And then you take on Iowa on the road. I do think you lose this one too. The Big Ten West, it's going to come down to two teams. And those two teams are Iowa and Wisconsin in 2023. I do think Iowa's got a really good chance to... Uh, to make some noise in the Big Ten. They could be a contender next season, I do think. Uh, Cade McNamara, that's a team that should be very improved. And defensively, they should be solid. So I'm going to take Iowa there in a close one. Then Rutgers on the road. I do think you beat them pretty easily. Uh, don't expect them to be too good. And then Michigan, I mean, you got them at home. So you got a chance to maybe pull a massive upset here. But Michigan next season is going to be a powerhouse. That is a team that is going to be very experienced. Um, and they've got all the potential in the world to win a national championship. Uh, we'll see if they can just get past the college football playoff semifinals and if they can even get there. I mean, it's it's tough enough to get there. So Michigan State's got a chance to pull off an upset of, of the decade there if they can beat Michigan. Uh, but I do want to take the Wolverines there in the end. And then Minnesota on the road. You lost to Minnesota last season in a disappointing loss. I do think you lose this season too. I do think it's a winnable game. A much more winnable game than, uh, say, the Michigan one. But I do think he'd lose a close one here, especially after a tough, uh, grueling matchup against Michigan. So you're 4-4 four four heading into November. You got Nebraska at home. This is going to be a nice win here uh, against the Huskers. I think Nebraska kind of right around six wins in 2023. Uh, so you get a nice win against them. And then Ohio State on the road. Uh, this is going to be a loss here. I do think Ohio State next year. I do, I mean, I think Michigan is still going to be better than Ohio State, but the Buckeyes still have got so much talent. Uh, that's going to be a solid team no matter what happens, uh, even though they might be might not be quite as good as in past years. But I think you lose here, and then you got Indiana on the road. You beat them in a close one. That was your 6-5 and five heading into the Penn State matchup. Penn State next year is also going to be an outstanding team. And honestly, I think it's for the better that uh, this is the last season of the Big Ten West and the Big Ten East because... It's honestly just insane considering Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State are in the same division. I mean, all three of them, and Penn State was kind of overshadowed last season uh, by Ohio State and Michigan because uh, Penn State couldn't beat either team. But the Nittany Lions were truly one of the best teams in the country last year. They just were overshadowed by the two top teams in the division, uh, both of which who made it to the college football playoff. And I mean, if you put Penn State even in the Big Ten West, I would say they'd win that division no problem. Even in 2023, you could say that. And I would go as far to say even Maryland could win the Big Ten West if they're in that division. It's just that's how bad of a division the Big Ten West is. I mean, you got several teams in the Big Ten West that, I mean, you got five teams that could be between six and eight wins, but no one uh, really would stand out. But for Michigan State, I got six and six. I think six and six would be a pretty good record considering the brutal schedule that this team does have. I mean, there is potential here for sure for this team to get up to nine. I've got nine and three for the ceiling, four and eight for the floor. Uh, I do think the range is pretty wide for this team. I mean, they could disappoint again uh, and they could also break through again. No one really expected Michigan State to be an 11 win team in 2021. So this team definitely could surprise once again in 2023. But for now, I've got this team at seven and, or at six and six for the prediction. Honestly, seven and five is very much uh, within reason as well. Uh, but I do have this team taking a couple of tough, close losses. But it's definitely an interesting team. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Michigan State. And I appreciate you guys all watching as always. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. Catch you on the next one.